Over to you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Jessica Edwards, and I am a collections analysis librarian at Columbia University Libraries. And I'm just going to go over how we've started using Open Alex to look at open access output and to begin to develop metrics and talking points around it. Um, so this is gonna be very high level because we've really just kind of started um, looking at this. So here we go. Um, so while we provide open access publishing options and transformative agreements for our authors, we really don't have a mechanism to track output. And we don't really have a good sense of um, any data from our planning and institutional research office. So we haven't had a good understanding of how or whether authors are using these agreements or if they have other needs that aren't really being met through the libraries. So we've been trying to think of how we can be more, pre more proactive rather than reactive to this. Um, and as part of our work on open access, we have a, um, a working group called the Open Access Task Force Working Group. And we started to analyze um, open access data to try to better understand our, um, our author's publishing trends um, and our, the output with the goal of using this knowledge to support our authors and the researchers via transformative agreements and other any other support that they might need that the libraries can give them. Um, so it's a very new, a new attempt at a project. Um, but the idea is to try to figure out something that's replicable and that we can potentially do on an annual basis. Um, and we don't want it to be a huge burden to the working group or to the people conducting the analysis, which would largely be me. Um, and we would want to have similar steps every year that we can just feel comfortable doing and comfortable comparing the results over time. So we're kind of trying to look at what APCs our authors are paying, how we can um, track this output, and what we can really um, learn from this so that we can help our authors any way we can. So originally, we used Scopus data, and we paired it with the um, OpenAlex API. Um, we have Scopus, so we just decided to try to use that. We also have Web of Science, so we tried both of those. Um, and we took citation data, and then we ran it through um, OpenRefine using the OpenAlex API to get more data. So we were getting APC data, um, more open access status, and I believe publisher data through there, and just got a very large amount of data and then started refining it and um, cleaning it up a little bit. So basically it was the harvest process for the scope of data downloads, then cleaning using Excel and Tableau prep, enhancing using open refine um, to get more open, open Alex API data, and then analyzing using Excel again and Tableau desktop. And um, this was really helpful. It was the first stab at it um, and it was great, but it was kind of a clunky process just because we were getting it from different um, locations and it just wasn't the best use of the time. And it wasn't, again, we're trying to find something that's replicable. So can this be easily done year after year? Probably, but not like, it's not very seamless. We'd rather have something a little bit easier. Um, and around this time, right when I was finishing this kind of first run of it, um, I think the the um, the search for Open Alex, which I had not really used before, um, there were some updates to it and there's some announcements at it. So we took another look at it and I realized that we could just get a lot of the data directly from there. So we revised the process and we took another look at it. So we recreated this using only the open Alex data from the search. So the process was just going directly in and getting the data again. So we went in, did the harvest through the data download. The cleaning step was much easier. Um, just using Excel, no need for Tableau prep. The enhancement was not needed because the data was already there. Um, and then the analysis was done in Tableau desktop again, um, using the same structure or similar structure to the first analysis. Um, so you can see the API query that's here, um, a very basic one, basically just using for any, looking for any Columbia University affiliated author um, through these calendar years. Um, at this point, we're not breaking it out to look at our different institutions. I know we have um, a few affiliations and a few um, child institutions that we could break it down further into. We're really keeping it very high level at this point and we might refine it later, we may not. Um, we just wanna see what's out there and this is a really great way to do that. Um, 
So this broader scope also gets more um, more humanities related data that we weren't able to get before. Um, so obviously in open access, there's going to be a lot of science related data out there, a lot of science publications, but there are some arts and philosophy and humanities publications out there. And we really were not going to be able to get a lot of that had we tried to um, keep using Scopus citations and then matching them with other data sources. So this was just so much better to get that broader sense of what's being published by our authors. So here's a quick screenshot from one of the resulting dashboards. Again, this is just kind of dumping the data into here and seeing what's out there. Um, these APCs are for any Columbia affiliated author. This is not necessarily the primary author. This is just for anybody who was associated with the paper that had APCs attached to it. So we were just looking at trying to get any number out there. Um, so this is really helpful because we, prior to this, we had no knowledge of what people might be paying for APCs. So um, this was really useful information. This is also really great to just kind of see the breakdown of how people were publishing um, the different statuses um, that the documents were being published as was really great. And we can see the trends over time, especially with the averages. Um, we can also see some of the links in the data. So we use Tableau here because we have it. Um, we're familiar with it and it's great, but there's so many other ways that you can do this, I know. But something that's great about this is um, these dashboards are dynamic so we can see the links between the data. So this one in particular, if we were to click here for the Elsevier, the top 10 publishers here on the next slide, once you click there, then it filters all the data. So we can see how this changes and we can kind of drill down into the data a little bit. So this is a really great way for us to take a deeper look into the data and really kind of enhance it to our needs. And then we can export it back out if we wanted to look at a particular publisher or a particular um, journal or something. And it just makes it a little bit easier for some of our um, our users on our working group to look at the data that's been filtered kind of through here um, for their needs. And what's really great about it is because we've loaded everything in here that we got from the initial Open Alex Harvest, um, we have a lot of fields in here. This is a backend view of what's in Tableau. Um, these are all the data fields that we have in there that we might not be using right now, but we can add them to our analysis later. And we can filter by them and we can drill down into them as needed. So if we want to go in there and we want to um, include only primary authors to get a better sense of, um, of potential APCs being paid, we can add that here fairly easily. And then once we save this, we can um, potentially use it again, um, year over year, we can just update the data, we can add a new data set to this, we can add um, at the end of calendar year 24, we could add that data, and then just have that plug in and we could just have another um, column of data and just keep keep it going. So this is something that could be really useful for us going forward. Um, so like I said, this is a really good starting point we came from not having anything. So this is something. So this is really helping us develop these questions and talking points. Um, we, um, we now have a better idea of what we even want to ask. What are we looking for? Um, being able to see the data helps um, guide us in that. We are also developing metrics to track year over year. Um, we're doing that in other departments as well. So being able to see the data and seeing um, what we're able to get helps inform what metrics we want to track year over year. Do we want to simply do publications? Do we want to do um, APCs? Do we want to do by subject? Do we want to look at other things? Um, like I said before, this replicable process is really important just because we are um, a library. So we're at limited staffing as most libraries are. So we want to make this easy for ourselves. So we, if we can set this up as simply as possible and be able to update the data with limited um, input needed to make any changes every year, that would be really great. Um, we also are learning more about what non-supported publishers our researchers are using and whether we can pursue agreements with those publishers or if there's other ways that we can support our authors there. 
And then we have some potential feature projects that we're hoping to do with this data. Um, some of them are right away and some of them are maybe for they're off in the future. Um, like I said, we will eventually fine tune the authorship details to get a better sense of the APCs paid. We might drill down into the institution details to separate out related or child institutions if we feel that we need to. Um, we may pair the output data with information about transformative agreements to estimate the impact of those agreements on reducing APCs. Um, if anybody's familiar with counter reports, um, that's a standardized report um, that electronic resources often provide. And so there is something called an item report that's at the article level. So we can match um, usage data of these, pu these published documents with the output to see how they are being used and get kind of an estimate and see that kind of information. Um, and we just are one also, minute left, Jessica. Perfect, thank you. We're also interested in conducting a citation analysis to see the impact of these publications on other publications to see kind of how these are then cited elsewhere and how that usage may be globally distributed, where are our authors having the most impact, are there trends there? and potentially comparing um, total spent on open access versus closed materials and output, st output statistics there as well as usage trends. Um, and I know I went over that really quickly, but if you have any questions or have any ideas for similar projects, I would love to hear from you. And here's my contact information. And thank you so much.